Okay, uh, welcome back. Today is uh, 23rd of February, 2022. So we are now in week seven, Wednesday. This is the second last uh, lecture tutorial that I'm having. And then after that, it will be Professor uh, Guan for the second half of CE20, uh, CE3007. In today's uh, discussion, I would first go through the exam question for April, May 2019, question two, which is on DTFS, DTFT, and DFT. If I have time, I will also go through question 2B, question four. Tutorial 2B, question four. All right, let's begin on the exam question. So the exam question, now I'll just write it down. And then the question two is this, the first part of the exam question, which is eight marks for this is given xn equals to, and then I give you a sequence, one, two, four, zero, one, two, four, zero, and so on, one, two, four, zero. And then I tell you that I can either put an arrow like this to say that x of zero equals to one to tell you that uh, it is going to repeat from one to four zero. Alternatively, if I have given you a picture, it will look like this, one, two, four, and zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, for example. Right, so this is one, two, four, zero, and this is n. So I could have told you the, the problems in two ways. I could have given you a sequence, and then I tell you where the arrow is in the beginning, or I draw a sketch for you. Both are the same. So the first thing to remember is that this xn, of course, is discrete time, repeating, and the period n is equals to four. So we can, for this, the question will ask you to do Fourier analysis. And when it asks you to do the Fourier analysis, it can ask you to do discrete time Fourier series, which is the easier one, and discrete time Fourier transform. If I ask you to do discrete time Fourier series, I'm asking you to calculate CK and k is equal to 0 to n minus 1, where this big n is the period of the sequence. So the first thing, of course, is that you have to remember this uh, formula. And so in the exam, uh, let's say if the formula is not given to you, you must copy this formula into your cheat sheet, one page. All right, so this is my cheat sheet, 1 over n n equals to 0 to n minus 1. I should put n here. And I would have x of n e minus j 2 pi over n k and n. Now, <clears throat> you'll remember that uh, discrete time Fourier series and discrete time Fourier transform have a relationship. So the relationship is simply uh, let me pull it out for you. I pause recording. Remember that when the sequence is periodic, the DTFS is this equation over here, and the uh, DTFT is here. The relationship of DTFS and DTFT for periodic signal is simple. We first calculate the DTFS, we substitute here, and we multiply by 2 pi, and we perform uh, impulse on the values that was on the CK itself. Okay, so let me write down this equation first and then we can go back to the exam question. So this is 2 pi times the CK and then we put the CK in omega equals to minus 2 pi over n times K. All right. So this is the equation here. So when you reach this point, 
you realize that if you are in the DTFS world, you plot K and you plot the magnitude of CK and you plot the angle of CK. And you'll go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and that's all for this example. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3. You do not need to plot higher case. If you are in the world of uh, discrete time Fourier transform, then your horizontal axis is omega. And you are, you are going to plot from 0 to pi to 2 pi. Right, sometimes you will realize that I also can plot by minus pi, minus two pi. You realize that this guy is repeating every time, that's all. So here is the magnitude of x, e, j, omega. And here is the angle of x, e, j, omega. Again, this is pi and two pi, minus pi, and minus two pi. Typically we sketch here or sketch here. It doesn't matter because uh, we map zero to two pi. So what you realize is that uh, it goes here and then it repeats here again. Okay. All right. Now, uh, when we go from the left-hand side, which is this guy to the right-hand side, then you will see that the values are multiplied by 2 pi for the C case. And 0 will correspond to the 0 radian. And then what about where, where should I put all these deltas? Okay, So the deltas are being put at omega equals to 2 pi divided by n times k. So k goes from 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so. Uh, but never mind, let us now work on the examples first and then we'll come back to this picture. All right, so, so the first step to answer this question, the first step to answer this question is let's calculate CKs. So CK, I just repeat the equation summation of n equals to 0 n minus 1 x of n e minus j 2 pi over n k n the first thing to remember is big n is equals to 4 the small k equals to 0 to n minus 1 means 0 to 3 the small n is 0 to n minus 1 also also means 0 to 3 Let's calculate C0. Well, if you plug in the values here, so remember the value is x0 equals to 1, x1 equals to 2, x3, sorry, x2 equals to 3, sorry, x2 equals to, oops, 1, 2, 4, and x3 equals to 0. So in fact, we only have this four values to play with. X3 is not important because it's zero. So zero multiplied by anything is zero. So if we have only one, two, four to play with, so you plug in one, two, four into these equations with the various k, various n, various big n, and then we can calculate zero. So in the exam, you definitely have to find out how to do this complex number, real number multiplied by complex number, complex exponential and sum it. Okay, the answer is this, 1.75. 1.75 is a real value. You can say 1.75 plus J0, or you can say 1.75 angle, angle what? Angle zero, or you can say 1.75 exponential of J0. Whichever, yeah, there's three forms. One is the rectangular form, one is the polar form, one is the complex exponential form. All this means 1.75. The second one is, and if you can calculate this, then the answer is this, and then I will get this 0 0.75 minus j 0 0.5. Now you can convert it into 
and I always prefer the polar form. And then I will write my answer minus 2.55 radian. Magnitude 0. So this is the magnitude and this is the phase. So I will leave it to you to calculate C1, C2. I'll just give you the answer and you can compare by yourself. And the last one is a very interesting one. You will see that the numbers are very, very similar. The only difference is the sign of the complex number. Okay, now if you get all your computations right, you will see that there is a complex conjugate in one in some of these numbers here. Here is it. And then you will see that the magnitude is the same. And the phase is plus 2.55, which is opposite of this. So if you don't see this kind of symmetry, then of course your answer is wrong. Okay, so this is a hint. Now, we know that we can convert DTFS to DTFT by multiplying CK with 2 pi and putting delta at 2 pi over NK. So what does that mean? All right. So if I have wanted to do it this way, if I have wanted to do 0, 1, 2, 3, this is K. And this is magnitude of CK. So let us see the first one. I'm going to use my red pen now. And the first guy is 1.75. Okay, my second magnitude is 0 0.90. So this is 0 0.9014. The third guy is 0 0.75. 0 0.75. And the last guy is the same as the first guy, which is 0 0.9014. So this is the magnitude of the DTFS. What about the phase? So you draw it one on top of the other so that it lines up. One, two, and three. And here is the angle of CK. And the first one is zero. And the second one is minus 2.55. So this is minus 2.55. The third one is zero. And the fourth one is plus 2.55. So this is the magnitude and the phase of the DTFS coefficients for different case. Now, of course, the conversion to DTFT is like this. So again, we will map this and then you realize that I'm going to do same 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so this is now small omega radian per sample. All right, or, yep. And uh, so what should I do? Okay, so remember that uh, there's, there's something 2 pi over n here. And there is 2 pi and big N is 4. This is pi over 2. And remember that we are doing k times 2 pi over n. So k is 0, 1, 2, 3. So what does this mean? So this is k times pi over 2 means, so k is 0, k is pi over 2, k is uh, pi, and this guy, the last one is 1.5 pi. So in fact, the translation of uh, k, this is k equals to 0, this is k equals to 1, this is k equals to 2, and this is k equals to 3. Now, what happens in k equals to 4? k equals to 4 is 4 divided by 4 times 2 pi is 2 pi. So remember that actually when we reach the fourth point, we are the same as 0 radian per, 
sample because if you travel two pi radian per sample, it's the same as traveling zero radian per sample. You're moving one round in one sample here, you're moving nothing in one sample here. But they, in the discrete world, it means the same. So here and here are aliasing. Okay, All right. So we now realize that actually k equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 means this. So this is 0 0.5 pi, this is pi, and this is 1.5 pi. So actually we should throw away these guys and focus on the thing in below, which is omega radian per sample. All right, now, so what do I do? Now, now I know where I'm going to put my delta. So now I'm going to put my delta at different points. And then the height of the delta is 1.75, which is exactly the same as here, multiplied by 2 pi. That's all. So it is nothing but CK multiplied by 2 pi, CK multiplied by 2 pi. And at this point, it's no more a stem. It is an impulse. That's the difference. OK, so now we do for different values. So this is 0 0.9014 times 2 pi. This guy is 0 0.75 times 2 pi. And this guy is 0 0.9014 times 2 pi. OK. Then now what about the angle? So angle, OK, please don't, don't make this mistake. So this is 0, this is 0 0.5 pi. This is pi, this is 1.5 pi. And again, now I'm going to use the red pen. And here's the diesel. And here goes down. And it is minus 2.55, no times 2 pi, OK? Only in the magnitude is multiplied by 2 pi. So this is minus 2.55, exactly the same as here, except this is a stamp plot. This is an impulse. Here, and then up, plus 2.55. So in the exam, in the quiz, you have to label all this. So this is the angle of x, e, j, omega. This is the magnitude of x, e, j, omega. You have to label all these values. So this is omega here. You have to label the values clearly so that we know that you get the values right. Okay, that's it. So, so that's it. This is your eight marks question. So if you can do this, then you have eight marks. I pause now. Okay, let's proceed to the second part of the question, question 2B. So 2B is a, okay, that's question 2B. And question 2B has uh, two different parts. The first part is a three marks question. And this three marks question says, X of T is equals to, X of T is equals to, so I'm giving you a continuous time signal and I'm giving you cosine of 2 pi 1500 T minus pi over 6. So I'm giving you a real time signal and then I'm going to ask you to sample Fs equals to 8K Hertz and I'm going to ask you to produce Xn. Okay, so, so I hope you can convert uh, continuous time to discrete time. So it's capital T is equals to 1 over 8,000. So all we are doing is we reproduce, sorry, we replace T by NT. So this is minus 2 plus 1 cosine 2 pi 1,500. So that little T here becomes NT and it will be N. And But we remember what big T is, which is 8,000. And then minus pi over 6. So you work this out, it's minus 2. And then we have plus cosine of 3 over 8 pi n minus pi over 6. Okay, so this is 3 marks. All right. <clears throat> now, the second part of the question is a little bit harder, which is a 6 marks question. So in this 6 marks, you say we are saying, apply a 16 point DFT. Okay, so uh, you, 
So DFT on XN. Now sketch the DFT magnitude and phase. So actually a DFT is nothing but a, a DTFS. Huh? So and clearly label the X and Y axis. Okay, so, but here we are. Now, you'll be thinking, how am I going to do the DFT? I pause first. Right, so these slides, uh, you should copy into your cheat sheet. Uh, and then this is the focus of the digital signal processing. So we know how to calculate DTFS. We know how to calculate DTFT. So what about DFT? DFT, the equation is summation of so in dft world is we are going to this we're going to say how many samples we're going to analyze n equals to five so therefore it's n equals to zero to n minus one n equals to zero to n minus one now we're not saying that he's going to repeat we're not we're saying we're less going to analyze these five points only so we're going to take these five points and e minus j k2 pi over n over times n what does this look like exactly this guy Summation of n equals to 0, n minus 1, x, n, e minus j. So exactly the same, except that little 1 over n in front. So in fact, DFT and DTFS are identical, except, I mean, that little 1 over n in front. That's all. Okay, so in, so you can treat DTFS and DFT uh, the same. And the C case will be the same, except that 1 over n in front. All right, so let's uh, proceed. The interpretation, of course, is a little bit different. You have to go through the lecture notes. But here in the discussion of the exam papers, we will just immediately just show you the answer. Okay. Okay, so let's copy down the, the equation here first. X of K equals to summation of X n e minus j k 2 pi over n small n n equals to 0 big n minus 1. Now, okay, this is a trick question, okay, guys? I told you big n equals to 16. So if, if you are, of course, you can do brute force. You can generate small x n from x 0 to x 15, and then you have n equals to 0 to n to 15. Right, because I told you that big N is 16. But if you do that, then you're going to have a lot of problems, right? In the exam, you have no time at all to solve this big equation for N equals 0 to 15. You don't have. So actually, this is a trick question. What is a trick? So I'll show you the trick now. So please don't do this. Don't do this in the exam. Especially because, because I have given you a complex exponential or a sine or cosine wave. Okay, let's try. So what am I going to do? So first, let's uh, remember what is my waveform. My x of n is equals to minus two plus cosine of three over eight pi n minus pi over 16. So I'm going to focus, let's focus on uh, what is minus two first. What is minus two? Minus two is minus two angle zero. It is minus two plus j zero. It is minus two exponential of j zero radian per second n, isn't it? Oh, okay, so actually the frequency of minus two is frequency at omega equals to zero radian per sample. So that's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is the cosine. Cosine of three, eight pi n. This can be broken down into, broken into two complex exponential. 
Okay, what are the two complex exponential? So remember e j theta equals to cosine theta plus j sine theta. e minus j theta equals to cosine theta minus j sine theta. Plus together, what do we have? We have two cosine theta equals to this guy. E plus j theta plus e minus j theta. Therefore, cosine theta equals to e plus j theta plus e minus j theta divided by two. And therefore, cosine of, and what are we interested in? 3 over 8 pi minus pi over 6 is equals to e plus j. And then we have to put the bracket properly. Please put the bracket like this. And therefore, you're not confused that this whole thing represents theta. Plus e minus j, 3 over 8 pi, pi n, sorry pi n minus pi over 6 divided by 2. So you will realize something here. This is the positive frequency of 3 over 8 pi. This here, because the minus is in front, can you see? So this is the negative frequency at 3 over 8 pi. Okay, so this is the phase shift. The phase shift is minus and minus, therefore the phase shift is equals to plus pi over 6 here. And the phase shift here is plus times n minus, so this phase shift is minus pi over 6. So you realize something. One of them is at positive frequency 3 over 8 pi. One of them is at negative frequency 3 over 8 pi. One of them is negative phase shift. The other one is complex conjugate of it, it's positive phase shift. So this behavior always happen because our left-hand side is real, okay? So you can figure it out. All right, so so, so the, what's the trick, right? So we now know that, hey, my x of n is minus 2, which is actually the angle is, what do you call that? The is 0 radian. The other guy is sitting down at 3 over 8 pi. The other guy is sitting at minus 3 over 8 pi. And I'm asking you to draw the, if I ask you to draw the DTFS, then the problem is trivial, okay? Oh, sorry, DTFT. If I ask you to draw the DTFT, it is very, very simple. The answer pops up immediately. Here is omega, here is zero, here is the magnitude of x, e, j, omega. And what am I asking you to draw? I'm asking you to draw at at what do you call that? At magnitude, uh, at magnitude, at frequency zero, we have minus two. So, so how to draw? So, how to draw uh, minus two, guys? So you realize that this guy minus two absolute is two. So, for example, is two. Later on, you have multiplied by 2 pi or whatever. Okay, let's multiply by 2 pi. It's 2. Well, I'm drawing the DTFT, okay? So it's 2 multiplied by 2 pi. But remember, that guy is minus. So how do I, how do I tell, tell somebody a value is minus? It is minus pi. So at frequency 0, the magnitude. So it's, so it's what is minus 2? Minus 2 is... Oops, where did I do? Ah, I, I did a mistake here. I should correct myself. So minus two, I should, so this I should be wrong. It should be plus two, and this guy should be pi. Ah, okay, that's better. Okay. So this is plus two and plus pi. Okay. Uh, so okay. So so the answer is at frequency zero, I have absolute value of two multiplied by two pi. The phase is minus pi. What about the other two guys? One guy is sitting at three over eight pi, 
So let's do, let's say this is 3 over 8 pi. And let's say this is minus 3 over 8 pi. This is 3 over 8 pi. This is minus 3 over 8 pi. And this is omega. One delta is sitting at 3 over 8 pi with a magnitude of 1 over 2. So this is half. So this is half times 2 pi. And the other guy is sitting at minus 3 over 8 pi. So this is the second guy. I should erase this. This is 2 times 2 pi. This is half times 2 pi. And the, what about the face? The face, one of them is negative pi over 6. Who's at negative pi over 6? It is at positive frequency. So this guy fires now at, at how much? Negative pi over 6. So it's a very small arrow. Okay. So here, the guy is minus pi over 6, and the other guy fires up at pi over 6 value. Okay. <clears throat> so you realize that this is the answer. This is the DTFT of this equation here. Okay. So the trick was never to compute the, this equation. The trick was to recognize recognize that since I'm given a, a constant, and a constant can be recognized as a complex exponential with zero radian per sample at frequency, and the cosine can be represented by two complex exponential. So immediately I can draw this uh, DTFT. Then of course, you have to draw the DFT in the exam. So the DFT and the DTFT are very, very similar. So again, what about where is the DFT? I'll now draw it for you. And the DFT is a K. K. And it will be X of K. And it will be angle of X of K. And we'll go from K is zero. And then of course, it will go to something and then you'll go to n minus one okay n minus one that's all so the problem is then we have to find all these points but you realize that it's only this guy this guy this guy will ever exist from zero to n minus one where is n n is here and if n n is equivalent to two pi so you realize that uh, we have to map these negative guys to the right hand side so, so there are a few things going on here and I'll leave it to you to learn how to map from the DATFT to the DFT. Okay, now I will pause. Okay, let's have a bird's eye view on this question again. In this question, I have given you a continuous time sequence and I convert it into a complex, uh, sorry, in a discrete time sequence. Once I have a discrete time sequence, then I ask you to plot the DFT magnitude and phase. And I ask you to use a 16 point DFT. This is a trick question because if you, if you follow this, this idea, then when you come to compute a 16 point DFT, you have to generate Xn from n equals to zero to 15. And then to compute this for x0 to, sorry, from k equals to 0 to k equals to 15. And that you have no time for the exam. Okay, you have no time whatsoever. Instead, the trick was to realize that if you have a, a constant and a, a cosine, it actually can be represented as a complex exponential. What is the constant as a complex exponential? It is nothing but the constant minus 2 which is two, sorry, it is two, I should not write like this. So uh, a minus two can be represented as two with a, what do you call that, an angle of pi. And in fact, of course, it can be angle of three pi and it can be angle of five pi, it can be angle of minus pi, whichever, right? That's why it can be all these, but let's do angle of pi. Or it will be minus two plus j zero. Or in fact, as a complex exponential, we can even say, it is two 
with 0n, where n equals to 0, 1, 2, 3. So it is just a sequence. So for example, x of n equals to minus 2 can be generated by this equation here for different n. Okay? So this is the clever, this is the interesting way to understand the constant 2 with respect to a complex exponential. And the complex exponential frequency is actually zero radian per second, second uh, sample. And every sample when we jump, we're not jumping, uh, we are just jumping by zero radian, nothing is changing. Okay, what about cosine? So the other way, so we have two terms here, we have the minus two and we have this guy. So the other term is three over eight pi n. So we know that, a cosine can be broken down into two parts. The cosine, when it is broken down into two parts, we remember the Euler equations and we just write it down and we realize that two cosine theta equals to some of these two guys. We move the two down, so we have this. We replace by theta by the one we are interested in, which is three over eight pi n minus pi over six. And then we get that a cosine is the sum of two complex exponential we interpret these two complex exponential. One of the frequency is three over eight pi positive. The other guy is minus three over eight pi negative radian per sample. The phase shift is minus pi over six here. The other one is minus and minus is plus pi over six here. So a cosine is represented by two complex exponential by two. So when we draw the DTFT, it is trivial. All we need to do is to locate the three over eight pi along the frequency, draw the, what do you call that? Draw the impulse, get the values, which is one divided by two half, scaled by two pi. That's it. So that's, that's, so we have this guy and this guy represent the cosine. What about the phase shift? One of them is minus pi over six, which is here at three over eight pi radian. The other guy is plus three, over, sorry, the other guy is at minus three over eight pi. The phase shift is plus pi over six because this is minus and minus. So we have these two guys, representing the cosine, and we have the middle guy sitting at omega equals to zero to represent the constant two. Now, because the two is minus two, we, although the magnitude is two, the phase can be represented as minus pi or plus pi, up to you. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, then finally, the answer to the last, sorry, the real answer to the last question is we want not to plot the DTFT, but the DFT. What is the DFT? The DFT and DTFT are very, very similar. So here we break from k equals to 0 to n minus 1. But where is this? Okay, 0 is easy. 0 will be translated to 0. What is the value here? The value here, now I will tell you, uh, the value here is 2 times n. The 2 comes from the 2, n comes from the 16 samples. All right. And minus pi, I will draw for you. Minus pi. So at k equals to zero. So we have gotten this, these two guys drawn at for the DFT. What about half times two pi? All right. So, so at three over eight pi, where is it? Where, where is this guy? Where's the three over eight pi in k? So remember that k, this on the horizontal axis, can be interpreted as k omega naught. What is k omega naught? It's k times 2 pi over n. What is big n? It's k times 2 pi over 16. And it is k times pi over 8. Okay, so we've, we found that actually you'll be going from 0, this is pi over 8, this is 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, and so on. What do we need? 3 pi over 8. So we are interested in k equals to 3 as well as minus 3. So we are going to draw our friend here, the values at this point. And therefore, we are going to draw at this is 3 and this is minus 3. And then we are going to draw. And here is minus pi over 6. And here is plus pi over 6. And the value here, what do you think it is? The value here is half times n, half times n. So you go and figure out why n. 
And the n is because it comes from 16 samples. Half comes from this half. Okay, so this is the relationship of DTFT to DFT. Okay, I'll pause now.